Hi guys, welcome to the short video about how we can use the tracking feature in the Capwing video editor. They are talking about motion tracking, motion tracking made for anyone and it almost looks or sounds like there is an automatic tracking but it's actually not. I mean there is some help here but unfortunately it's not an automatic tracking. When you read the text here it sounds or looks very tempting but uh, yeah at the very end it's actually not. But there is some help and I'm going to show you how this works. Here it's described in three sections but it's actually same thing everywhere. So we just click here and then we get some assistance. So first of course we need something like a video so we click here to upload or drag and drop something here inside. So I don't have to show you that that's just a normal simple video and so let's imagine we want to hide her face. I mean of course we can use some elements like some shape here or some like uh, emojis or whatsoever but we can also use her own face. I mean it's not perfect but I'm going to try as good as ever possible. And of course the first idea which people are having is to copy the track and then use it as a blur thing because we do not have an FX track in most video editors. We have something like an FX track and then we can use blur, real blur, active blur. But here in Capwing that's one of the biggest thing which is lacking a feature which is doing real blur so we don't have so we have to work around this thing so a lot of people are tempting to just copy and paste this track here and then use the blur effect and that works for some things but it does not work for moving parts i can show you that here so for example we start here at the beginning we mark this track it's a little bit difficult to see of course we would have to reduce the audio in the second track but we don't have any audio here so we don't have to do anything of course what we want is to have a zooming and the position and so here we have the position we mark that too so we have the two keyframes for zooming and position that's good and what we normally do when we want to blur something a small part in front of another part when we copy the track we are using the crop and so we need to mark the second track and we use the crop and we make this smaller and now it's doing some crazy stuff i've never seen that before maybe it has to do with the bandicam recording but i've done this before and it was not such a problem yeah we move this back here i don't know what's going to happen here that was absolutely super crazy and of course we add some blur here and that's also a problem with cap wing it's totally overdoing in the preview so if you think 5 or 10 is okay no usually it's not we usually need a 20 or so and so we go along the timeline we adjust the thing regarding position and the size you can see it's automatically adding these keyframes that's the good thing so we make it a little bit larger move the position put it here move it same thing here move it size move it size yeah, and so on and so on you'd think okay that's a good thing so here at the moment doesn't look too bad but we don't get a real uh, preview of the blur so we have to really export that so i'm starting the export here and so we are ready here to download or just view the export now let's see what's happening you can see the big problem here i mean at the beginning it would be okay Maybe we would have to apply 30% instead of 20 for the blur. But the big problem is that we have a moving part here which we have selected. And of course that's not always the face. So we cannot do that. It's not just like a normal blur. It won't fit here unfortunately. That's a big problem. So let's go back to the editing. So we remove this second layer here. So that definitely means that dynamic blurring is not working for moving objects in cap wing. So when we want to blur the face we need a picture of the face. And of course a lot of people would be tempted to use the timing function when we split here. We can use the timing freeze frame and then we have some kind of a picture here. But this doesn't work. It always causes some huge problems in the export when you're using something like that we could put it here and then we could even crop it 
then have more or less only the face something like that but this never works it always fails in the export so don't do that when we need a picture here then you have to use your own tool for example screen capturing tool the cool thing here in capping is that we can paste something directly out of the clipboard so you have the face now here put it there it's a little bit large put it here blur it a little bit okay i think that's not bad so enhance that till we don't use it anymore i think we are using it till here then we add keyframe to the zooming and keyframe to the positioning that's what we use and so we're going back to the beginning and so we move along the timeline move it a little bit make small steps the smaller steps the more accuracy you have and so it's not a fully automatic tracking it's just a manual tracking with some ai assistance of course and it's a linear thing it's not like moving up and down don't expect that to happen if a person like is jogging and while jogging moving up and down it's not covering the full movement you can see we have to make it also large but we have activated the keyframe also to the zooming so that's really good here we get getting closer we have to make this also a little bit larger here now at the very end of course we have to make it outside so i hope that's matching here yeah it's not perfect but doesn't have to be perfect at the moment you can do this much better yeah i think i have to adjust this here maybe it's a little bit too large so let's try this here you can see how this works this is about yeah okay as a first shot it's not bad i mean the good thing is with capwing video editor it's rendering in the background it's rendering on the servers it's not rendering here on this pc so we could make copies create some other versions maybe a version here with some emoji so instead of this one here moving this to the side we could also use this thing here put it in front of her face and go to the beginning add the keyframe to the zooming and to the position and do same thing here again make this a little bit larger i mean it's not a big thing here pretty easy definitely much more efficient compared to doing everything on your own now it's up here and now it's totally out of the picture we can reduce the size so let's start this here and see what it does and uh, i would say it does a pretty good job this is also what you would see then at the very end and so i've been rendering now both options so let's see the first one with this smiley okay didn't work there was some problem here okay at least it works with downloading that's weird never seen that before downloading works but viewing export doesn't work yeah and so here we have the smiley version definitely works really good you can see how nicely and smoothly this is uh, flowing along the head here really nice and so let's watch the second version with the head yeah pretty much same thing of course doesn't look very natural but you get the point what it is it is definitely blurred it's a head i mean this is just a, like a sample here it was not the idea to show you a perfect thing here but you get the idea you have same thing and the face is blurred something like that of course you could optimize that a lot but still i hope i've been able to help you a little bit with this video and so now i think you should be prepared to implement one of these options so and hope i've been able to help you a little bit with this video if you have any questions or comments or better solutions then just let us know down in the feedback area i'm always happy to talk about these things and if you like the video give me a thumbs up subscribe my channel thanks for watching see you next time